I'm going to show you how to make this. It's a St. Patrick's Day DIY banner and it's super easy. What materials are we going to need for our St. Patrick's Day DIY banner? I am going to be using these fabric markers. I'm not paid nor sponsored to create this video. So this marker here, these two here are the fabric paints and this one here is a fabric marker and I'll show you the difference later on. For the main part of the project, I am going to be using some canvas. It's nice and stable and it will help give us that really nice banner pennant look. I use a PC, so I use Microsoft Word and I produced this very typical looking banner. Um, and this is going to be my template for my St. Patrick's Day DIY banner. And then I went over onto the clip art section and pulled off the shamrock. So this is going to be the template for putting the, sham the shamrock onto the DIY banner. Because there is so much canvas to work around, I always like to just cut just a little bit around the actual project. And then I can come in later on and make it a little bit like cutting next to the actual pattern. I find it easier just because the canvas is so big. So of course you will have to measure the section that you are going to be placing your St. Patrick's Day banner in and you need to work out how long your St. Patrick's Day banner needs to be because my little area is going to be different to your area. So you will need to measure and then once you have all your measurements, cut out as many of these pennants, I think it's called pennants, as you need for your St. Patrick's Day banner. While I'm cutting this, I just want to remind you guys that I have over 300 sewing videos and quilting videos on my channel. So there is something literally there for everyone. So don't forget to subscribe. If your fabric looks anything like mine right now, you are going to have to get your iron out and just press all of these creases out. And it's going to be easier then to fine tune the pattern and place it up again and cut it with a pair of scissors. I'm going to get my rotary cutter, I'm going to line it up at the top and then I'm going to cut. Just make sure that the fabric doesn't move on you, I mean it doesn't have to be terribly precise. There we go. You can put a wonder clip on there but I find that it ends up being too bumpy um, and it kind of then you, your ruler doesn't lie flat when you're trying to cut the shape out. Now I know I could have done this on my Cricut, but there are people out there that don't have Cricuts. So this is a great way of doing a St. Patrick's Day decoration idea without a cutter machine. So you're going to go through and you're going to do that to each of your pennants of your St. Patrick's Day banner. I know that this fabric is going to fray on me so I'm going to use these. These are pinking shears and they have a zigzag on their blade and this helps to prevent any more fraying. It doesn't stop the fraying and it's actually going to produce a really nice detail on your St. Patrick's Day banner. So I'm just going to go and snip off like the smallest amount all the way around. If you don't have a light box this is what you're going to do. You are going to tape your shamrock onto your window. So that'll be taped down onto your window you are going to get your pennant and you're going to place it over the top. And trust me, you'll be able to see through this fabric if you use it over the window. I'm going to be using a light box, but if you don't have a light box, that is your option. So I'm going to place my shamrock here down on a light box with some washi tape. 
that just keeps it nice and secure and in place and then I'm going to get my pennant and I'm going to roughly place it in the middle if you want to find the middle just fold it in half and then I would fold it in half here because you kind of want it in the middle about here and not down where this triangle part ends up being so once you find the place that you want it to be I would recommend sticking that down again with some tape I am going to be using this pen it's the same maker as the people that I use with the paint pens and basically this will erase with paint air and water it's a fantastic pen so I'm just going to go in now and I'm just going to trace around my shamrock design I'm not really too bothered about keeping it tidy just sketching around get the general design all marked out like I said at the beginning of this video I'm not paid nor sponsored to create this video now these two fabric pens come in two different types so this one here is more like a marker more like a felt tip pen marker and then this one here is more like a fabric paint I've not actually used this one and I will show you guys how to get this one working so like I said this is a fresh marker and basically you're just going to press it in and out until you start seeing the paint come down through the nib see it's just starting to work its way down to so keep going until it's fully down like so and then you can just use it and I'm just going to start painting so I'm going to go right over the top of that purple and that purple is going to just disappear and go copy all the way around and then start to colour it in and I'll do the same thing with the marker so you can see the difference between the two pens and you can see which one you prefer also so here we go the next one is more like the felt tip style it's the best way I can describe it so I'm just gonna go around the shamrock I think this one prefers cotton more than it actually prefers a canvas in my opinion and I like to use and work on canvas a lot I do have to go in and try these pens out on regular cotton just gonna go through and I'm just gonna colour it all in let's compare them side by side so this one on the right was done with the marker and I like the colour green of this one is a lot more shamrocky colour this one is kind of like picking up a little bit more like teal colour and this is the paint marker but the the ink distribution or the paint distribution is much better on this one and this one and they both do need to still be heat set so i'm going to go through and i'm going to finish all my shamrocks on my saint patrick's day banner and then we will continue on with sewing this together i have everything now painted and what i'm going to do next is i've got this gold rip rack that i'm going to use as my banner holder you can use ribbon you can use binding tape it's completely up to you it's all curly because I've had it wrapped around a lollipop stick so basically you want to find the center 
of your ribbon. So you're just going to fold it in half and literally just find the centre. Now I'm going to mark this centre with a wonder clip and I'm going to move over to my sewing machine. I am not paid nor sponsored to create this video. I use a Baby Luck Soprano sewing machine and in my thread today I am going to have a cream coloured thread and in my bobbin I'm also going to have a cream coloured thread. In my sewing needle I am going to have a 9014 Microtex needle. Now with that centre marked on our wonder clip we're going to take our very first shamrock here and you can find the middle of here just by folding in half like we did before. Place the middle of that folded edge with the middle of your binding strip. Now it's up to you, you can do it one inch below, I'm going to do it right at the top there so I don't need to second guess myself as to where it needs to be on the next one and I'm going to sew that straight into place. And all you do for sewing rickrack into place is just sew it straight down the centre of the rickrack. Don't forget to reverse and go over to lock your stitches into place and sew all the way down and getting that first pennon onto your St. Patrick's Day banner. The distance between the two pennants is going to be about one inch apart. Try and keep it consistent because it just makes it look good. So I'm going to do the right side of the pennant, then the left side of the pennant. I'm going to do, I'm going to work my way from the center and then out and going to do it equally out. So if I need any more pennants for the area that I'm working on, I can easily do that and not kind of make a mistake in the very centre of my banner. Once you've finished, just cut all of the stray threads away. This makes it look a little bit tidy. And there you have it. You've just made yourself a St. Patrick's Day a DIY banner. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I have over 300 videos. Bye-bye.